Audrey Vickers and I'm here today to critically evaluate a project that I've been working on for a few months now using UK police crime data and IBM Watson Analytics to develop smart insights for public benefit. And the justification for this project was down to me focusing on an aspect of life that me as well as other people are wary of on a day-to-day -day basis and that is crime, something that happens all around us. Uh, many police forces across the UK are under pressure due to staff shortages. The fact that police are lagging far behind technology used by uh, criminals as well as the public. The thing is, uh, due to these staff cuts, is the each constabulary within the United Kingdom and Wales collects so much big data regarding street crimes. And the problem is they don't seem to have the expertise to augment the data to, 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 to together to develop smart insights. And obviously police forces have a responsibility to be in a position to effectively prevent or respond to criminal activities. And technology is something that they need to use to embrace and use as a good vehicle to make sure that they are analysing the data. So each constabulary within the UK uploads their street level crime data to data.police.uk. This is for the public domain. Members of the public can uh, download the data like I have done. And it comes in folders with CSV files containing uh, the specific month of crime data. In addition to this, the data looks something like this. Um, and the data is really interesting because it contains the different crime type that was occurred, the date and the month, uh, the location, the latitude and longitude coordinates, all sorts of stuff that you could really plug into um, some data visualis visualisation tools to get some smart insights out of. The requirement specification for the system um, I wanted to make was to be used by police officers at Derbyshire Constabulary to contribute to the formulation and implementation of better IT strategies within the police force. It needed to have minimum training, it needed to be accessed inside and outside of base, it needed to be um, abiding with the CIA triad which is confidentiality, integrity and availability, obviously to try and keep the system secure, and abide with data for humanity and the work of data kind, encouraging the data to um, be thoroughly checked through and the police need to take responsibility and accountability of the data and any risks that are involved with it. So I'm going to talk to you guys about the design of my data. And the first thing to note is the use of the skills framework for the information age or SOFIA. And in uh, one of the main SOFIA documents, the main principle in designing SOFIA was an emphasis on skill and not technologies or products. Uh, whilst this can be argued, Watson Analytics is a very new online environment and new features are being added and improved every day. So I made sure that if I, overcame, if I had any problems, I did a thorough investigation and made sure that it was, the, the problem was not down to a lack of skill on my part, but it was just something that Watson Analytics hasn't quite, uh, quite done yet. So the features of Watson Analytics are fantastic. So you upload data in either an Excel spreadsheet format or a CSV format, and you can either explore, predict, assemble, or refine the data. Explore is what it does, what it says on the tin. It allows you to have a look at the data, produce some quite nice graphs and charts. Predicting is great because if you have a large set of data, it spots trends within the data. Assemble is when uh, you want to make sure that the design of a system or, uh, or a report, for example, looks good. It's an infographic, tabular environment. And refine is um, if you want to ever slightly edit your data. So I'm going to show you a really fantastic screenshot. And I think this is what sets IBM Watson Analytics um, to the rest. So I've uploaded some street data. And what it's basically saying is, look, We've had a look at the data. Here we've noticed some fields, for example, what is the trend of the number of crime type over year? We've spotted that crime type fluctuates over the years. So we're going to ask you, we're going to give you the opportunity to select a question and we're going to show you a graph. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. So 
what, like I've obviously said, is I'm going to use Watson Analytics. I decided to use the assembly feature of Watson Analytics because you can't cross pollinate between the three features explore, assembly, and predict. Um, I obviously had to think about uh, the colours and the style of uh, the graphs, what they're going to look like. What's the best way of interpreting some data? Is it a table? Is it a line graph? Is it a bar chart? And decide on uh, any external data I wanted to use. Um, I would thought to myself I'd really like to see if uh, temperature and crimes have a correlation. So the start of my journey was I uh, went onto the data.police.uk website and downloaded the CSV data from January 2013 to November 2015. I noticed that Watson Analytics only allows um, one massive data set to be analysed at a time, so that required me to augment all the CSV files together, uh, a few hurdles, I had to jump over to enable the data to be uploaded, which I'll talk about later in any in the insights that I gathered I got from this project. Um, I then downloaded the average temperature from the Met Office in for Derbyshire, and I had to add that to the data set um, and upload it to Watson Analytics and make sure that Watson Analytics was happy. So once being in Watson Analytics, once I'd got through the doors of finally uploading my data, hallelujah, it was really fun, I have to say, because it just allowed you to be really creative with the data and think, I'm going to try this, and you don't have the fear of the system breaking, it's stable, you get some fantastic looking uh, visualisations. This graph on the right was probably something I was the most proud of because it took me about 45 minutes to figure out how to get temperature as a bar and uh, the crimes as a line graph. I just thought it was absolutely fantastic, the outcome. It was a really good achievement for me to uh, finally get something that I wanted to see that I, I, I saw in my head. So I'm going to talk about the insights that I gained from the project and like I've brushed on previously, Watson Analytics is very temperamental when it comes to uploading the data and I understand why it's temperamental. It obviously has um, steps and certain uh, things that it's happy and not happy with. One thing that it was not happy with, with the slightest, was latitude and longitude coordinates. It thought that it was skewed distributions, which basically means it wasn't quite right. They thought there was a mistake in the data. Um, this is a data quality report that you can produce if you use the predict feature. And it was obviously saying it's mid-range quality. Um, it obviously hates the longitude and the location data. They called this a record ID field because they believed that there was no analyt analytical um, context for this uh, field and they felt like it was only it was only needed as a label and it shouldn't be used in the data. Uh, one other problem that I had for technical integration was the fact that I uploaded 300,000 different crime entries and some of the uh, visualizations for example um, a tree diagram clipped the data alphabetically and only allowed 2,000 entries, so that was very um, frustrating. I had to find certain ways of working around that, uploading more of a summary type piece of data. So another problem with uh, IBM Watson Analytics, which I'm really hoping they sort out, is the fact that um, the visualisation features are very limited. They provide a palette, as you can see here, um, a selection of colours that you can click. You cannot say, no, I want to make this yellow one a yellow, that's absolutely fine, but I want to make this one a darker saturation in yellow and this one an even darker saturation. A guy um, called Edward Tuff, who is very well renowned for drawing graphs and visualisations, says you've got to avoid cat catastrophe um, before, you, uh, before you even begin. You don't want to confuse the user by looking at a graph with all of these colours. And a lot of people struggle to distinguish between red, green and yellow um, on graphs. So it was quite annoying that I wasn't allowed to use the initial design ideas that I had. 
and I almost had to make do with what I had, which was really frustrating. Um, the police data, first and foremost, was fantastic. However, I think it would have been better if they had specific days and times of the crimes, um, that they had a more an encrypted uh, data set that actually had the accurate locations. I understand why they generalised the locations, but in a project like this, when you're wanting to find out certain and um, the exact locations for example a generalized location isn't very good and uh rick use because the police data wasn't probably presented in a way that watson analytics liked it enabled it ha i was basically had to use excel to uh organize 300,000 data sets and my computer was crashing microsoft excel kept freezing so that was really frustrating so I'm going to show you some of the insights that I gained from the project and the first one is something that shocked me was how many antisocial behaviour reportings happens in Derbyshire and this was collected between January 2013 to November 2015. You can see here on this radial chart that 132,000 antisocial behaviour crimes were reported um, in less than two years so that is really shocking. Um, I found it really interesting that certain crimes peak and trough throughout the year, so for example bicycle theft, and this you can probably guess for yourself is due to the fact that not many people ride their bikes when it's very cold and in the summer they're obviously cycling around and leaving their bikes out more. Uh, this has uh, no correlation in uh, contrast to the bicycle uh, thefts, this is possession of weapons and possession of weapons is clearly very high in the winter and then all of a sudden it drops in the summer. The top five locations for crime within Derbyshire turned out to be in Ilkeston. Uh, so what I really thought would be interesting was to pick the uh, top five locations, make line graphs with certain lines being crimes and identify the different crime types that were being targeted. So for example, we're looking here, this is number four, this was Aldi area in Ilkeston. And you can see there's a few antisocial behaviour reportings and a few shoplifting reportings. So I found that extremely interesting. In an example, uh, this is Critchley Street area in Ilkeston where there's a lot of bars. Um, a few antisocial behaviour, quite a few antisocial behaviour offences and a lot of violence and sexual offences being reported here. Like I discussed before, I was really interested in uh, temperature and crime data. This is antisocial behaviour reports, obviously something that happens a lot in Derbyshire. And you can see it's almost driven by the temperature. As the temperature gets warmer, more people are outside, more antisocial behaviour is happening. This is possession of weapons, like we've discussed already. This has no correlation whatsoever to uh, temperature. So I wanted to finalise the uh, presentation by talking about data for humanity. We need to make sure that data for humanity principles are embodied, we need to make sure that people aren't uh, vulnerable at all, so obviously coordinate data is uh, generalised to protect people. We want to create a peaceful coexistence and obviously the police act as a public body to protect the community, which is fantastic. They're using the data to help vulnerable people and people in need, and this could be, for example, people that live in areas of the community that suffer badly from crime. And they want to use the data to preserve and improve natural environment. And it's a very small example, but for example, if police notice that damage and arson is happening a lot of the time, the police can find those areas and almost find ways to tackle them. And what is interesting is I think and I added this because I want the, wanted the data to help create a fair world without discrimination. And every citizen in the United Kingdom has rights thanks to the Equality Act. We want to make sure that certain places aren't being prejud prejudiced. You don't want police just there just because. So there needs to be data driven um, to guide the police's actions. And here I'm going to show you a video of the finished system that I produced. So this is what happens when the police log into the system. It shows you a really nice welcome screen. This is a tabular assembly feature. And here, 
I'll just pause it briefly. Um, this is the crime type general comparison. So what I decided to do was to uh, I'm very sorry was to use a data player to toggle through the different crime types. So when they press play, the different crimes appeared and were highlighted throughout the data. And this was great because it allows you to distinguish clearly between the different crimes. Now this is a crime type over time, so this is different area graphs that show uh, all the crime types that are reported, what type of crimes fluctuate over different months. This is crime type and location comparison, so this is the top 10 locations in Derbyshire that experience crimes, and as you can see I have produced some very interesting results from different areas in uh, in Derbyshire so that is very interesting to look at and finally I've used the crime and mean temperature comparisons again looking at all of the different uh, different crime types and the months of the year and showing basically is are there crimes that um, are driven by temperature so that is the end of my system. Thank you very much for listening.